Hello everybody, today I would like to talk about traveling waves on transmission lines and reflections. Here I have a voltage source, I have a switch and I have a line a few kilometers. After closing the switch I get a voltage wave traveling back and forth between the line heads at speed of light. Together with the voltage wave there is also a current wave traveling back and forth on the line. As long as the source has no inner resistance, the first voltage wave is equal to the source voltage. The current wave is equal to the voltage wave divided by the line impedance. If the line end is open, the voltage is doubled at the line end and the current is equal to zero. If we connect a very large resistance at the end of the line, we get the same reflection as with the totally open end of the line. Here is the formula of the reflected voltage wave in function of the forward wave, the line impedance and the termination resistance. For the current you get the same formula as for the voltage, but watch the minus sign here. If the resistance at the line end equals the line impedance, there is no reflection. If there is a mismatch between the line and the termination impedance, the traveling wave will be propagating according to the formula. After a few cycles, the termination impedance will be visible at the beginning of the line. Log in to the pro version of the simulator to have access to the traveling line model to get hands-on experience. The example shows 20 milliseconds of a 200 kilometer line. The traveling wave itself is hidden in the model. You can build your own complex circuits and get a perfect understanding of this important topic. Access the simulator by this link here, www.ecsb.ch. A direct link is also available under my YouTube movies. Now at the line end, I connect the second line with a different impedance instead of the lumped resistance. You can see the reflection at the discontinuity and the propagation of the wave into the second line. To make the case on the simulator, I have added also here a second, a little bit shorter line and I vary the lumped resistance at the end to show the effect. Inside the line model of the simulator, there are two arrays, one for the forward and one for the backward traveling wave. For each line, the number of segments should always be at least two. The number you see on the line model corresponds to the number of segments of the line. The number of time steps per simulation run directly influences the number of segments of the line. The number of segments you then get per line le depends on the line length. For demonstration purpose, I change the frequency of the DC source to 50 Hz. I can also switch to the phaser application and see what happens at 50 Hz with the phasers. I can also use uh, three-phase line models uh, to simulate complex three-phase systems. In continuous mode I can then vary the phase angle of the individual sources in order to better understand how the power flows in the system. Or again I can make a three-phase phaser analysis. Learning by doing is my mantra. Get hands-on experience by playing around with a simulator. Register on this link here. I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.